Hello YouTube. Of all the culture and traditions type subjects that we have talked about on this channel before, like love and marriage customs or funeral customs of each of the races of Tamriel, one we haven't yet talked about is music. So let's fix that. This video aims to give an overview of the musical traditions of each of the races. We'll go over stuff like traditional instruments, cultural significance and stylistic choices. So strap in, as today we're talking about music. Alright, so on Tamriel music is a quite significant presence in basically every culture. In almost all inns and taverns around Tamriel music is played and performed. Performing music, just like in our own universe, comes in all shapes and sizes around Tamriel, from professional bards playing in kingly courts or a tavern, to the sea shanties on the high seas, to drinking songs known by many a tavern regular. There's also many religious songs, with the worship of certain deities going hand in hand with communal songs. There's also power in music in the Elder Scrolls universe, as in the Elder Scrolls universe there is power in sound. Some of the most powerful forms of magic of the Elder Scrolls universe are sound based, and it's therefore not a surprise that some songs actually have magical powers, and in some cases spells are actually cast by performing a song. Now, in terms of instruments, there are certain instruments which basically every culture around St. Tamriel seems to have. Basic instruments like the lute, the simple drums, tambourines, flutes and this thing i have no idea what it is i tried google i tried asking my friends if anyone knows what this instrument is please put it in the comments but yeah we know that those instruments are quite prevalent all around tamriel but there are some instruments which we only find in certain cultures or only in a couple of cultures but more on that when we look at the differences between the races and the cultures because we have some more Tamriel white stuff that we need to talk about, as we also know that basically all the cultures around Tamriel have a version of sheet music. Whether or not these writing styles of sheet music are all the same, we don't know. Although we do know that some older cultures had sheet music, which is very hard to read for modern bards on Tamriel. So it's safe to assume that there's likely some difference between, let's say, High Elf and Argonian sheet music. And yeah, even Argonians have sheet music. I was surprised as well, considering their whole philosophy of impermanence. <laughs> And many Argonians is aversion to recording stuff like history, but we know that they have sheet music. And talking about the Argonians, let's delve into the musical differences between Tamriel's cultures, starting with the Argonians. Now, the Argonians have a very peculiar musical tradition. For one, music and sound plays a big part in their communication with the his trees, the conscious and intelligent trees which are created the Argonians in ancient times and still give direction and shape to their culture. In their communication and worship of these trees, the Argonians in some cases make use of wind chimes, the sound of which the Argonians then interpret, and in some cases they use that sound to determine what the hist's will is. However, worship of and communication with the hist is not the only way in which the Argonians employ music in their culture, as they have quite the unique musical repertoire. For one, they have some very interesting instruments which give Argonian music a unique sound. For starters, they are the primary users of a strange type of slide flute. They make use of their own types of conga meyer drums. And they are known to make marimba instruments out of teeth of swamp creatures. They also use a lot of primitive bells, which they often hang on their tails to use while performing. And they have by far the coolest unique instrument of all cultures, which only they know how to play, the vossa sattel, or frog pipes in the common tongue. It's a favorite instrument to many Argonians, and it uses a strange pipe system connected to five different swamp frogs, who then are connected to horns, while the player uses small buttons to regulate the sounds by decreasing and increasing the shape and sizes of the frog chambers, which is where the frogs are in. Now, the instrument makes horn sounds combined with rhythmic croaking of frogs, and according to many Argonians, it reminds them of home, and it's one of their favorite instruments. I mean, take a listen to how it sounds. Yep. 
grand. Now, while we only have a few Argonian songs that we ever hear performed in the games, we know that they make use of throat singing often, and they often rhyme while singing. And the timing of their songs is a bit strange, as their songs often seem to have a very peculiar time change in them, with speed changes throughout the songs. And the songs that we can hear remind my friend, who knows a lot more about music than me and who helped me out with this video, he compared the songs of the Argonians to the modern day grunge style of music, as it often talks of negative emotions, however also of interconnectedness and connections. They sing of the negative sides of life, but also of unity within their culture. It's quite peculiar. Now, next up are the High Elves, or the Altmer. And as expected, their musical tradition is completely different than the Argonians. For one, it's far more refined, no frog sounds in your Altmer songs. Rather, they are Tamriel's primary users of refined instruments. While other cultures do make use of instruments, such as the harp, the theorbo and the lyre, the Altmer seems to be the primary users of this. And as far as I can tell, they seem to be the only ones, at least in the lore that we know of, to make use of violins and triangles. The Altmer have quite a broad musical repertoire, as music seems to be a favorite pastime of many Altmer in their culture. And well-made songs, especially ancient well-made songs, are very appreciated by traditional Altmer. When possible, they tend to sing in the ancient Altmeri dialects, and especially the nobility and conservative Altmer tend to perform music which is said to have been written on their ancient lost homeland of Altmeris. This music is said to be strange and convoluted, with the sheet music being very difficult to read for modern day Altmer, as it's apparently a far different system for modern day Altmeri sheet music. Now, musicians, especially if you're a good musician, that's a very respectable profession in Altmer society, and there are multiple institutions and guilds dedicated to musicians. For example, we have the House of Reveries, which is an institution built of artists of many kinds including many musicians. A uh, link to my video where I cover that institution in depth is in the description of this video if you want to know more. Now, their songs themselves are often about their own history, their religion, also about how shitty humans are. They actually sing quite often about that. And they also often sing about their own kings, queens, nobles, noble families and institutions, which may have songs written in their honor or just on their own request. Now, something quite interesting is that in the original lore, High Elves seem to have been one of the very few races which actually constructed and used music boxes to play their most popular melodies. Now, in the newer lore, some other races used them as well, such as the Imperials and the Dunmer, but originally the High Elves seem to have been the only ones, or at least almost the only ones. Now, in terms of musical style, I'll once more have to refer to my friend who knows far more than me as... I've got as much rhythm as that chair. Sorry about that. Anyway, according to his analysis, based on the very few songs that we have that the Altmer perform, they primarily use the classical ballad style of song. They use verses and choruses in a very storytelling manner, which likely came about as part of their religion, which venerates their ancestors. Now, according to my friend's analysis, they sometimes switch between a more classical style of ballad and a more modern type of ballad. Don't ask me why, because once more... Okay, I'll stop now, but my friend's analysis would make sense, as assuming their musical development follows a similar trajectory as that of the ballads in our own world, then it would make sense that they still use a lot of classical ballads, as a lot of high elves are still fond of their ancient songs brought from their ancient homeland, which likely use a more classical style. This couples nicely to their religion, in which their ancestor god Jeffre is credited with inspiring and making the first great elven ballads and teaching birds to sing, thus being a patron god for musicians. Now, for the Altmer's cousins, the Bosmer or the Wood Elves, we have relatively little information. With a small pool of available song performances, there aren't many stylistic things that we can say about their music. From the few examples that we do have, my friend said it reminded him most of classical hymns, but even that is quite unreliable as we have such a small pool of information. In terms of the content of their songs, they mostly seem to sing about religion, their leaders, and of course about nature and the forest. They credit the god Ifra with the invention of music, having been the one to teach the birds to sing, and considering children with a gift for song to be blessed by Ifra. Their priests to Ifra are called spinners, who are also often seen having instruments with them, likely meaning that Part of Ifra's worshipping involves song, but that's just speculation on my part. That being said, however, the Bosmer also have a few instruments of their own. For one, they are the primary users of castanets, which they use in combination with drums in the rituals. They also seem to be the only one to have nose flutes. 
great. And they also seem to be the primary users of shams, which is an instrument I have never even heard about. And they have special hand pans, which they use for religious rituals. And apparently they also have kazoos, although that could be an imperial instrument, as it's primarily found in a place which used to be occupied by the imperials in Valenwood. And finally, they used pan flutes, which I guess is cool. Now there's one final bit that we can say about the Bosmer because we know that they use a quite fun material for their instruments, flutes specifically, as they tend to make flutes out of the hollowed out bones of green pack breakers, so Bosmer who hurt the forests of Valenwood. Isn't that quite interesting? Alright, next up let's talk about the Bretons of High Rock. The Bretons, more or less a long expectation, have both elvish and human influences in their musical tradition. For one, in the traditional Breton pantheon, the god Jeffre, just like with the High Elves, is also credited with the invention of music. And just like the High Elves, they often make use of the ballad style of song. Although apparently the Breton ballad seems to be more sped up and less classical and slow than the High Elf ballads, while retaining part of the original Elvish style. According to my friend, who actually knows this kind of stuff, it often reminds him of so-called folk ballads. Another apparent difference with the High Elves is that while the High Elves often sing about religion, ancestors and leaders, the Bretons often have less specific hero worship and more celebrate collective battle victories and factions rather than individuals. These ballads come in all forms, from happy and upbeat to melancholic. And finally, they also seem to have a few shanties and lament style songs, and the druid factions of High Rock also seem to have their own musical tradition. In terms of cultural significance, just like with some of the other races of Tamriel, music can be religious with the Bretons, but it's also often performed at mass gatherings such as holidays and nightly tournaments. Some nightly tournaments even have their own song prepared about them to be performed at the tournament. And while they perform these songs, Breton bards often make use of traditional instruments like the lute, the lyre and the flute. But they also have a few instruments that are unique to their own culture, such as the key harp, which is a strange string instrument, which I assumed was unique to the Elder Scrolls universe, but apparently isn't. It actually exists. Cool. Now, from what we know, they are also the primary users of grand organs, and they are one of the only users on Tamriel of bagpipes, along with the Dunmer or the Dark Elves. Now, in terms of the Dark Elves, just like the other races, they also have a musical tradition of their own. Those worshipping the tribunal seem to associate Vivek, the living warrior poet god, most with music and musical performance, while others who do not worship the tribunal likely associate Shiogorath with music, as there are some classic stories of him inventing music. And since Shiogorath is present in Dunmer religion, I would think it's likely that they associate him with it, if they don't worship the tribunal. But that's just speculation, as the text crediting Shiogorath from music isn't directly linked to the Dunmer. So, yeah. Just my speculation. Additionally, House Dagoth, before its fall, seems to have had a great musical tradition of its own, but we don't really know too much about that. Now, in terms of instruments, the Dunmer, along with the Bretons, seem to be the primary users of bagpipes and the only users that we are aware of of kalimbas. We also know that they have an unnamed instrument, which is, uh, let's say, quite interesting. It's an instrument made out of the antennas of little critter scribs that is mounted on a small wooden frame. You then put that in your mouth and plug the antennas of these bugs like strings, with your mouth acting as the instrument sound box. Sounds absolutely delightful. Now, in terms of musical style, the Dark Elves seem to be a bit all over the place. Sometimes they use classical ballad styles and sometimes folk ballad styles and sometimes the lament style. And they often have dissonance between the melody of the song and the chords of the song. And they often seem to vary in tempo throughout the songs. But generally it seems to be a bit faster than High Elf music and a bit slower than Breton music. Now, in terms of what they sing about, a large section of Dunmer music seems to be about death, betrayal and violence. But they also have some more philosophic songs, and funnily enough, songs about animals, which you'd expect the Bosmer to have, but the Dark Elves seem to have more of. Although, the animals in Dark Elf songs are often used as allegories for people in songs with an aim to teach people, mostly children, life lessons. Now, next up is another race that we know relatively little about, the Orcs. As far as I'm aware, we have no actual song performances from orcs, so we can't really say anything about their style. And we only have a handful of song texts, which doesn't really give us a good indication of what orcs would usually sing about, as the few songs that we do have from them are strangely predominantly love songs, which then are expected very violent in their lyrics. 
along with orcish culture. Now having such a small pool of songs means that we can't really make any conclusions on the type of songs that they usually have as love songs instinctively seems a bit of an outlier. Although there is some evidence in item descriptions that orcs may have a lot of war chants and marching music which then seems a bit more in character again. But having just some item descriptions is also not the bestest of evidence. The only thing that I'm confident in saying is that most likely their songs do have relatively violent lyrics in all their genres that they sing in, because that's in line with their culture and we have evidence of their love songs being so violent. Now something that we do have a little more information on for the orcs is their instruments. For one they seem to use a lot of horn instruments, ironically they also seemingly use harps just like the high elves, though I have to imagine them being a bit different from high elf harps most likely. And they also have a very interesting instrument that I wasn't able to find much of a real life comparison to which is called the Golk Leaf, which is an instrument with a single glass fiber string over which several bows like a violin bow are drawn to make sounds. It's basically a reverse violin, instead of one bow string going over several violin strings, you have several different bow strings going over one gold leaf string. Interesting. And along with the Imperials they also use squeeze boxes which are basically accordions. Pretty fun stuff. Talking about the Imperials, the accordion seems to have been invented by them and then exported to the orcs. And as I said before, Imperials may have used kazoos and they seem to be the primary users of the cornu, which is a large circular blow instrument made out of metal. In our own universe they were mostly used by the ancient Roman legions it seems, so it seems fitting for the Imperials to use them as well. But considering the Imperials are by far the most cosmopolitan culture, we can also see them use instruments of the other races from time to time, which are then important to the heartland. That being said, the Imperials have quite the musical tradition of their own. Their goddess of music is the Bella, and they are the only race that we know of to have actual opera houses in the lore. And from Oblivion we also know that the Imperial City Arena, next to being used for blood sport, is sometimes also used for concerts, which is pretty neat. And the Empire has also sanctioned several different musicians guilds within the Empire, some even dedicated to a single instrument or a family of instruments, like blow instruments. In terms of musical style they seem to be close to the Bretons in terms of speed and they don't quite have dissonance in most of their music like the Dunmer. Although they do sometimes use it. They sometimes seem to be closer to the Altmer in musical style but then in other songs closer to the Nords. So their musical style is completely all over the place. Which is kind of to be expected of a culture who is the most cosmopolitan of all the other races and imports a lot of instruments, customs and musical traditions of other cultures into their own culture as they have often ruled large parts of the continent. Now in terms of the content of their songs, that's also all over the place. They have marching songs like the Orcs, propaganda songs about individuals, mostly emperors and important generals, like the Altmer. They have historical songs like the Bretons and religious songs like basically all the other races. So basically just like with musical styles and instruments, they are just all over the place and have borrowed a lot from others. Next up, let's talk about the Red Guards. They are very similar to the Orcs in that we have just too little information about them to say anything about their musical style. However, we do know a bit about the content of their songs. For one, they often seem to sing about war, about conquest and about their ancient Jokudan past with the great conquest of Hammerfell in the first era being a prime subject for song. And songs from ancient Jokuda that survived up until the present day are actually being held in quite high regard in Red Guard society. Even though some songs are now unplayable, as the Yukuns used very peculiar instruments like Yukun flutes, which clearly look like flutes, but the way they should be played has been lost to history, as no Red Guard alive knows how they should be played, which is quite interesting. We also know that the Red Guard seem to be the primary users of Punji flutes, sometimes used by snake charmers, and they use tambours, which is a technology that they apparently brought with them from Yakuda. And they seem to be the primary users of the zither which is also a real life instrument that I'd never even heard of, so good job Elder Scrolls for educating a barbarian like myself. That being said, that's basically all we know about the Red Guards, other than that we have some documented sea shanties of their sailors, but that's about it, unfortunately. Alrighty then, let's talk about the two cultures that we haven't covered yet, the Khajiit and the Nords, starting with the Khajiit. The Khajiit clearly have Eastern and Arabic influences in their music. In terms of their musical styles, they often employ the hymn style of music and they emphasize the R sound in their music. Generally, they use far lower tones of voice than the other races while singing, with the exception of the Argonians who go very, very low. Sometimes they will employ the dissonance in their music, which we talked about previously with, for example, the Dunmer. And what's interesting is they often employ a completely different musical skill than the other 
Races of Tamriel. Because the other Races of Tamriel use the real life western scale for music, which uses 12 notes. The Khajiit instead seem to use a musical scale more reminiscent of the real life Arabic scale, which uses 7 notes. In terms of the content of their songs, they often sing about their own culture, their history, their myths and their religion. And that religion part is actually quite logical, because their goddess Kanarthi, which is also the goddess credited by them with giving music to the world, is partly worshipped by performing music. While they do have some light-hearted folk songs, even those seem to have a more professional and coherent composition than most of the folk songs of other cultures. Now my music friend listened to all the song performances that we have and he said that in terms of musical style the Khajiit seem to be most consistent and mostly uniquely designed by the Elder Scrolls developers. Which is pretty cool and definitely also goes for the rest of their musical tradition. Because for one, maybe except for the Argonians, the Khajiit definitely have the most unique array of instruments. Because they have a couple of instruments that almost no other race uses. For one, they have the Khajiit di Kwanun, which in the real world is an Arabic string instrument played while sitting down and plucking the strings of the instrument. They also use the Ezrash or Ezrai, I don't know how to pronounce it, which is an instrument based on the real life Indian string instrument, which no other race on Tamriel seems to use, and in my opinion sounds pretty sick, I mean listen to this. Now, they also seem to be the primary users of the Gezeng, which is based on a real-life Chinese instrument. Now, in my opinion, their culture, at least in terms of music, is by far the most interesting one. Well, at least rivaling the Argonians. I mean, come on, the Vossa Sattel is the best instrument from this entire video. It has living frogs in it. Alright, now that brings us to the final culture that we will talk about in this video, the Nords. The Nords, quite unsurprisingly, have quite a storied musical history, as Nordic bards, or rather skalds as they are called, are often revered in their culture, and in a way they are the ones who sometimes are the only ones crediting with keeping Nordic history and culture alive, as they sometimes simply are the only ones to record certain events in history when others just won't do it. One of the coolest things about Nordic musical tradition is the so-called Poetic Edda, an immensely long song which documents the history of the Nords in song form. The great skalds of Nordic history have been adding to it for years, ever since the establishment of their culture in Skyrim. This massive song, based on the real-life Poetic Edda that we have of some parts of old Viking culture, is immense, spanning thousands of years of skalds adding parts to the song, with some parts inevitably lost to the histories. And in Skyrim, during the Bard's College questline, we actually try to retrieve a part of it. And there we also learn that the Poetic Edda is often referred to as Skyrim's living history, which is just super cool to me. I mean, some parts of this song are just straight up lost, some of them are known, some of them we don't really know in what you know order they are, but we do know that everything in this song is part of Nordic history, and it's added to by skalds of many, many generations. That being said, in terms of musical style, the Nords are surprisingly similar to the Altmer or High Elves. Didn't expect that, did you? Well, neither did I. They often seem to employ the ballad style and sometimes more melancholic style of music, although their words are often less high class, so to say, uh, than the Altmer, as their songs are often subject to quite stereotypical Viking subjects. You know, fighting, drinking, the old gods of the Nordic pantheon, drinking songs where someone is made fun of, and just exaggerated legends and glory, that kind of thing. One of the things to highlight from that is definitely their referrals to the ancient Nordic pantheon, as even modern Nords who have grown up with the Nine Divines still often seem to sing about their classical pantheon with gods such as Kain and Shore, so that's quite interesting. In terms of musical instruments, the Nords are actually quite boring, with them not really having any unique instruments, save for one pretty cool thing, and that is that the ancient Admorans, before coming to Skyrim, brought a technique of making flutes and musical horns out of mammoth ivory with them, which would then be richly decorated on the outside. Pretty cool stuff. Now, other than that, they have pretty cool traditions of crafting miniature harps out of ice wraith parts, although we have no examples of those actually being used, which is a bit of a bummer, as it's just an item description. Alright, now that's basically everything I can say about the musical traditions of Skyrim's primary cultures, and I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this video and that I managed to teach you something new about the Elder Scrolls lore. And if I did, why not consider subscribing? We are officially nearing the 100,000 and believe me, you want to be in the club before we reach it, for no particular reason. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you consider returning for the next Elder Scrolls lore video, probably next week. Now, all that remains for me to be done is to thank my top Patreon supporters. Mr. Bernardo Binna, Gabriel Binna, Polarized Poutine, Pavel T, Bantam Guar, Athena Iotis, Dragonborn of Narevar, Volcure of Argonia, King Chris, Bulge, Scribe of the Scrolls, Doji, Fenrir, Sword of Bushido, Rakai, and Mr. Christmas. It's thanks to these people and all the others on screen that this channel stays alive and that I can make these videos, and for that, I am very grateful. That said, I hope to see all of you in the next Elder Scrolls lore video, probably next week. Bye-bye.